years roll on, you see Elvis performing for the big crowds and all that. But yeah. Oh yeah, that's another, that's right, another right, story. Red West is all through here. Red oh, West, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. Was that his, that was his cousin, right? That was his big body guy. No, he was, no I'll tell you a story about Red West. Oh, okay. I, uh, I can search for it. If you like for me to follow up on this, I can make you a copy that's got Red West. Uh, it's, it's interesting you mentioned George Klein. Yeah, I guess he's the radio guy that you always that's hear, right. interviewed about. Elvis. Elvis got him started. I'm ready to go. Elvis got him. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I thought he was already and, and George, <laughs> once Elvis got going, I mean, real big. Yeah. George had a program. It was very similar. I think he had a radio and TV program. And his TV program was, was kind of a small scale Dick Clark mm. uh, oh. dance Benson, band yeah. uh, program. Mm. It was just local, it wasn't going national. And, and, he, had a, and he, had, he was good. He had, he's a good. Uh, I don't know if he's still going. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think he's still. Yeah, he's still alive. I've seen him on some of his Elvis shows. And... But uh, George uh, had a very popular radio program, and uh, and Red West was his number one bodyguard for a long time. Yeah. Was Red your same? No, he was one year behind us. Oh. One year behind us. Yeah, he was a big bully. He he was. Now, he, the reason Elvis, the well, he was he was a. He was he was the kind of guy you didn't want to mess with. I'll put it that yeah. way. Okay. <laughs> you, you didn't want to get in the way of his fist if he if he decided really? to he became, swing uh, at you. <laughs> a martial art expert. But anyway, and also he had bit parts in a few movies. Right. Well, okay. <laughs> what happened one time? The reason uh, Elvis, I'm sure this had a big bearing on on Elvis choosing Red as his bodyguard. This goes back in the school days. Now, I did not know this until later. One day, Elvis was in the, in the boys' room, and there was a couple of, two or three guys, they were going to grab him and cut his hair off. <laughs> well, Red stepped in. Nice. And he came to the defense of, uh, of Elvis. And naturally, and needless to say, they didn't cut his hair off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Elvis, there's no question, he, he, he took a liking to, to Red yeah, and he hired him. Yeah. yeah. Red would travel with him. Uh, there was a time when uh, George Klein, Tommy Young, and I forget who the other guy is, they traveled with him just to be a companion. Mm -hmm. But here's where I kicked myself. One, why did I not have the, the wherewithal to get Ellis to sign my book? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll let me tell you. Might be worth a little bit more now. <laughs> oh gosh. Well. Well, but, anyway. But it, it, I mean, how many people have one of these? Yeah. How many even have the book? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's true too. Uh, let me tell you one other quick story. There's a fellow in here. I can find him real quick. His name is uh, Carlton McFadden. You'll see him in here. Carlton called me up one time. Hey, Bob. Uh, Hell is going to be singing Friday night at the Clarish Hotel. You'll go hear him. Yeah, let's go over here. Now by then, I mean, he's not, he, I don't think he'd been on the, the Jackie Gleason program. He might've been on the Ed Sullivan program. But you know, he, he, as far as we were concerned, he was big time, you know? <laughs> but anyway, uh, Carlton called me up, yeah, yeah, let's go. So we, so we did. Oh, uh, it was in the Claridge Hotel, downtown Memphis, and had this big, like a ballroom round table set up like kind of a nightclub but no booze which you know which i can appreciate i never have a drink i don't make a boast about it i'm not a drinker okay but that's beside the point so we we uh we are there and elvis <coughs> that particular night wasn't doing a lot of singing more a lot of clowning around than anything <laughs> so uh they had the they took the, they had an intermission and we looked at one another you want to go yeah let's go so we went out into this big, I guess you call it a foyer, just packed with people. Now, I have no reason to make this up, Shane. We're in this big crowded <coughs> foyer, and I don't know what the distance would be, but Elvis spotted us, and he came to us, and he shook our hand, he said, let's go across the street to... He walked out in the middle of the whole crowd and everything? Yeah, and he yeah, he did. I walked okay. out in the back yeah. of the crowd and yeah. He walked to us and he said, hey, let's go across the street and have a Coke. And that's when like people are like ripping his clothes up and it's like he was... Elvis well, the fact was that he did have to be careful where he went. No kidding. It's, it's a shame. He, he couldn't go to church without being mobbed. 
You could yeah. go anywhere. Yeah, right. There came a time about now th in this particular time. Uh, it was just right before he got really famous. And yeah, we, we went across the street. Nobody bothered him. And so we go across the street to the little gridiron restaurant. It's just a hole in the wall place. <laughs> so that yeah, like a box car you fix up. So mm -hmm. so here's Elvis. I'm sitting to his right and Carlton's sitting over there. And we chat for probably a good 15, 20, 30 minutes. Just during his intermission of the show? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he left, he left the program to come and talk with us. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and here again, why in the world did I not ask for a piece of paper? <laughs> <laughs> and now Elvis, write a little note to my best friend. Yeah. <laughs> he make 50 copies. <laughs> Oh, that worth a fortune. So at that point, Bob, no, I didn't think of anything like that. <laughs> so what did you think about his music? Oh, I loved it. So like, I, I, I like Elvis better now than back then. Yeah. I know it sounds strange. Mm -hmm. So like across the nation, he was seen as this big controversial, you know, guy. But in his hometown, you all knew him as the the good guy that he was, or whatever. Oh yeah. It never was controversial. But because of his gyrations, you, if you remember, yeah. if you read about it. I'm sure you have. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ed Sullivan, uh, when he had him on it, when Ed Sullivan had him, you know, they wouldn't show him waist down. Yeah. Unless he wasn't jockeying. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, some of the some of the ministers down there, they took shots at him. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, I think that's just because they're envious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was just something new. Yeah. yeah, it was. Hey, that's it. He came out with something new <laughs> yeah. that nobody had. Yeah. Nobody. I don't care if you look at country, and there were some very popular country singers back in those days. And and and, uh, and there were some good pop singers, but Elvis had a style of his own mm -hmm. that nobody ever had, never yeah. will have. Yeah. I still think it's great. You know, as far as secular, I'm not talking about gospel or Christian music, mm -hmm. but for secular music, I still he, think. He did pretty good gospel, too. <laughs> yes, he can. Yes, he could. We got, you may, you may have seen them, you may have them. There's two two videos that's been out for several years now. Matter of fact, James Blackwood was... Yeah, that's yeah. the one we have. Yeah, so, Elvis and Gospel Music. Or, yeah. 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 Showing him after... Shows the... Uh, kind of like the behind the scenes. Uh -huh. right? Same with old J.D. And, JD and, and, the, and those other guys. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you know, yeah, he loved gospel music. Yeah. He could sing it. Sing it all night long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and now, 